In this part, we continue the iOS port work, starting with camera kit view. Before I go into the four new update methods, I'd like to detour to the camera kit view class first. This is pretty standard. We just derive from UI view, which is the standard component type for iOS UI. This is the layer we set. Keeping it as a variable is convenient. This is a method we're overriding from UI view. It's invoked when the UI view is arranged by iOS, which also has something similar to a layout manager. This is the set layer method we discussed before. The implementation of the class is even simpler. We store the layer into the member field in set layer. When laying out the view, I update the frame based on the bounds. Both represent the physical location of the view on the screen. Codename 1 positions the UI view automatically, but the CA layer within is positioned by this class. So when coding one places the UI view based on the layout manager, the bonds of the UI view are copied into the layer so it shows in the same place. Now that this is out of the way, let's go into the update methods. Before I go into the ones we already saw, there is a hidden one which is invoked when a user invokes set facing to change the direction. It's not in the code from before as the functionality was embedded into that code. When we change the camera direction, we need to pick a new device and effectively start over again, which is what lazy init post authorization does. Here we discard the preview layer and stop the capture session. Objective C uses reference counting. We need to release objects we allocated. This is handled automatically by ARC normally, but ARC collides with the GC. Because this is essentially recreating the UI, we go through the second part of initialization over again. Objective-C and Swift don't have a garbage collector like Java does. Instead, they use reference counting, which means every object has a number representing the areas of the code that need it. When I don't want an object deleted, I invoke my object retain, and it's saved. When I don't care about it anymore, I do my object release. A retain operation increments a number, and a release call decrements it. When the number reaches zero, the object is released. There is more to it, but that's the basic gist of it. A few years back, Apple introduced a compiler enhancement that automatically injects retain release calls into the code so developers don't see this and it feels more like working with a garbage collector. This is called ARC, which stands for Automatic Reference Counting. Unfortunately, we can't get ARC to play nicely with our garbage collector. I won't go too, too deep into the subject of GC versus reference counting, as it's a problematic subject. But here's the gist of it. Reference counting can fail with cyclic references. Object A needs object B and vice versa. GCs are immune to such cases. Reference counting provides more deterministic behavior. That means it will always perform exactly at exactly the same speed as we can rely on its behavior. Garbage collectors are faster, but sometimes stall. For UIs, this can sometimes be a problem as a GC will behave one way in one execution and differently in another execution. We looked at using a hybrid reference counter slash GC solution when developing our VM and eventually scrapped that as there were no benefits in that approach. Both approaches are workable and you need to be ready to debug their pitfalls. 
Moving on, let's look at the update video quality method. While it's a bit bigger, the core concepts are relatively simple. If this is invoked before start, it's totally fine. This method will be invoked again when start is invoked. When we manipulate some configurations, we need to acquire a device lock to prevent concurrent modifications. The rest is a standard switch case to map the standard constants to iOS constants. This was pretty simple. Next on the line is update flash, which is also as simple. I can go over the method, but there is really nothing here that we didn't discuss in the previous method. We return for null device, we lock for configuration, and we convert the constant type. Surprisingly, update focus does have something new to say, despite being pretty identical to the first two. I'll skip the identical part and discuss the final section. There is no built-in focus on tap in iOS, so we need to use some code to do this. This invokes the tap to focus method on self, which is this object in Objective-C, when the user taps container. So let's look at the tap to focus method. Notice that this logic isn't something I came up with. I took it from a Stack Overflow answer, which is very convenient for implementing these sort of things. A tap returns a point on the screen, which we can convert to a point relative to the coordinate space of the preview layer. If we can declare a focus point of interest, we can just set the focus to the right point. It's not necessarily trivial, but mostly, mostly boilerplate. This brings us to the last and simplest of these methods. This is mostly a rehash of the other methods, so I won't discuss it. Notice it guards against zooming too much or too little. And that's it. With these changes, camera will basically work. We just need to fill in a few more details, which are mostly boilerplate.